Alright, so my last video on this channel, I said that uh, I was taking a break for a while, and uh, I did. I didn't really have any good ideas for videos for a while, and just... The motivation just wasn't there. Um, I think I've come away from that summer a little bit more refreshed. I've got a few new ideas uh, to work on, so... Uh, hopefully you'll see some more videos on this channel in a while. Anyway, I said that the next video that I was planning to do was going to be my top 10 albums, or my top list, for 2019, and uh, it's going to be a top 20. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep the descriptions of these albums brief, uh, just my thoughts on them. But here we go, my top 20 albums of 2019. Alright, so coming in at number 20 is the album Pitfalls by Leprous. I found this album to be a little bit of a disappointment, uh, way too many like ballad, like softer tracks, not really anything like too heavy, uh, but there are still a couple really good tracks near the end of the record, and I, I really gotta give them credit for, you know, the last track especially, the first two thirds of that last song are absolutely massive. Number 19 goes to Coldplay. Everyday Life. Now, I'm as surprised as you are. I mean, Coldplay, they're not really a band I typically check out, but I found this album to be really surprising. A bit of a concept record. It shows the band kind of experimenting with different genres. And I really liked the track Arabesque, which has like a really killer saxophone solo on it. I just, I really dug the album. It's structured very well. It has a little bit more going on for it than a typical Coldplay record, and I just, I really enjoyed it. Number 18 is Tools, Fear Inoculum. Um, I wasn't as impressed with this album as a lot of people I know were. I found a lot of the riffs to be kind of stock, but I did enjoy the record. I thought it was a good record, but it did feel a little like we waited 13 years for this. Number 17, Jordan Rudess, Wired for Madness. Um, there is some really good material on this record. The title track, uh, especially like that last bit of the first movement of it uh, that was released as a single, absolutely perfect. The rest of the album kind of has some meandering moments that lose my attention, but there's just some really good prog. It's a little bit more in the vein of something like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer than Dream Theater. And I think this is the Jordan Rudess album that's got the most sort of promotional backing behind it, so it's definitely something that I think if you're a Dream Theater fan, you should really check it out. Number 16, Baroness, Gold and Grey. I, I was also a little disappointed with this record, but I think I, I like it more on every successive listen than I did with the Leprous album. I found that there's some really good, solid riffs on this record, some really good tunes, and, you know, a few interludes that are kind of useless. But overall, Baroness's Golden Grey is a good record. Uh, the production's a little iffy, but I still think it's a good record. Check it out. Number 15 is the only EP on this list, and that goes to The Contortionists Are Bones. I wasn't too sold on this EP at first, uh, I thought it was kind of a little too mainstream, and I was disappointed by it, but the fact that I'm going to be seeing them live with Devin Townsend and Haken next year, uh, I listened to it a little bit more, and I found myself really appreciating the songs on it a little bit more, uh, particularly the track Follow. Um, still not too sold on the Smashing Pumpkins cover, but I still think that as far as EPs go, this is pretty good. It's about in line with uh, their work on their previous album, Clairvoyant. Number 14 goes to Korn, The Nothing. I really like this record. Um, Korn has been kind of getting better since the return of guitarist Brian Head Welch. And uh, I really find that this is the best album they've done since his return. In fact, since before that. Uh, some really good melodic stuff on here, some really heavy stuff. And uh, given that this is sort of a grief record with uh, regards to Jonathan Davis's uh, wife uh, passing away, uh, you can really feel some of the emotions on this record, and especially uh, one of uh, one of the songs on this record, uh, if I can't remember the title of it, I'll probably just put it down there after, but 
Um, I listened to it on my way down south to check out King Crimson Live, and I I had a cry to that song, so... Number 13, Opeth in Cauda Venenum. Uh, it's definitely the heaviest record Opeth has done since they abandoned the death metal side. Uh, they did really kind of bring forward the guitar riffs again. And I feel that this is kind of the album that, if you're an Opeth fan but kind of lost touch with them from Heritage On, this might bring you back into the fold a little bit more, but, you know, no guarantees. Uh, still all clean vocals, all, except for, like, a second of a shout in one of the songs, but I think this is probably their most cohesive, coherent record that they've done since Heritage, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Number 12, Neil Morse Band, The Great Adventure. I compare this album a lot to The Astonishing by Dream Theater in that it's like a double record, it's two hours long, and it, it is a little samey, and I got a lot of flack on my review for this earlier this year for saying that, but uh, make no mistake, I really love this record. There's some really good songs on it. Uh, I think the song uh, Welcome to the World is like, that's the chorus of the year for me. It's such a good, powerful chorus. Title track is really catchy, too. And it's just one of those albums that, like, when you put it on, you let it play. It, it is a ride. Unlike The Astonishing, which just really kind of, you want, you tap out before the first disc is even over. And this one, uh, I, can, I can sit through and listen to the whole thing, which is really cool. Number 11, Periphery 4, Hail Stan. Uh, this is another really focused album for Periphery. They've kind of done a few more experimental records over the last couple of years, uh, starting with the Juggernaut records and Periphery 3. Uh, I found that Periphery 4 is just a little bit more to the core of what Periphery is, and it really brings back the sort of gent guitar work, uh, brings back a lot of the solos. There's still a lot of melody on the record, but... I, I just think it's a really good record. It's the best one, in my opinion, since Periphery 2. This time it's personal. Number 10. I actually had a review for this album finished after my last video, and I didn't actually uh, post it because I wasn't too happy with how the video played out. And this is from a local artist, uh, Kevin Kloss, In Deep. Uh, this is a, a folk record, so mostly acoustic guitar vocals. There's a couple of like solo acoustic guitar instrumental tracks, absolutely brilliant record. Uh, it's sort of a concept record about uh, Kevin spending time above the Arctic Circle with uh, a sort of scientific and adventure cruise ship, and the lyrics and the songwriting are just absolutely sublime. I think this is his best work in years. And I'm not just saying that because I know the guy personally, but because this is a really good record. I think if you're watching this video and you don't know who Kevin Kloss is, Check out this record. It's so good. Number 9, Aventasia, Moonglow. It's a very cool mix of, like, power metal with, like, that Jim Steinman writing for Meatloaf kind of approach. It's a lot of melodrama, a lot of just hard-hitting, gripping, emotional pieces of music. Uh, I had the opportunity to catch the band live and, you know, get their, get their shirt. But uh, it was so amazing watching them play these pieces live with Tobias Samet and, like, eight other vocalists going at it on stage. They absolutely killed it in Montreal, and I'm so happy to have gotten the chance to discover this band. Uh, the, the track uh, Ghost in the Moon has been, like, in near constant rotation all year for me. It's such... An epic track. Same with uh, the 11-minute single, Raven Child, which features Hansi Kirsch of uh, Blind Guardian and Jorn Lande from uh, Master Plan. Absolutely brilliant songs. Just such a good, like, emotional, metal, melodic rock record. Absolutely recommend checking that one out. Number nine is Sabaton, The Great War, particularly the History Edition, uh, a concept record based around World War I and various stories of, you know, heroic deeds and important events and soldiers in World War I. It's just such a really good, like, 
historical record, and the lyrics are absolutely amazing. But on top of that, the music is really cool, too. I mean, uh, particularly the tracks uh, Fields of Verdun and The Red Baron, which are just absolutely cool songs. Uh, Such an epic record. Again, completely recommend checking it out. Number seven goes to a band that I only just discovered this year, and uh, I have notes reviews to thank for uh, posting about this band. Uh, It's a band with a really weird name, Moron Police, and their album, A Boat on the Sea. Very fun record, musically, like... It's kind of like a mix of, like, modern prog rock with, like, alternative rock vocals and, like, these anime theme music melodies that keep coming in. And it's just so much fun to listen to, you know? And it's very short, like, it's about 30-some-odd minutes long. And it, it just feels like one of those records that you could just, like, put it on in one sitting and you come away from it just feeling good. And then you read the lyrics and you find out it's all politics, but... Uh, It's still just a really good, fun record. It was like the soundtrack to my summer. Number six, Sonata Arctica, Talvio. It's a little bit more dark and down-tempo than their last couple records, which were, you know, a little bit more progressive and a little bit more uh, geared towards the faster side of the band and symphonic side. This is a little bit more like just them doing a slower arena rock kind of sound. Uh, But there's some really, really good songs on this record. It's a little bit more focused. It feels like the band kind of went, okay, let's get back to the core of what Sonata Arctica is now. We're not trying to appeal to the fans who want another Ecliptica or uh, a Unia kind of record. We want something that's a little bit more contemporary for what we're doing now, but we've still got to focus on what we're doing. And that's what Talvio is. And it's just a really good record. Number five, Voyager, Colors in the Sun. Uh, I, I started really appreciating like synthwave music recently, and I find that this is like the band that seems to most effortlessly blend it with, you know, the kind of prog metal leanings that I go for. And uh, the, the a couple of the tracks on this record I'd been listening to for months before the record came out because they had released them as singles like Bright Star, uh, Colors in the Sun, um, just really good, like very 80s atmospheric kind of prog metal, and it's something that I, I've always kind of missed in prog metal over the years, and you know I've discovered recently with bands like The Contortionist. But Voyager does it in a very, like, uplifting kind of way, and uh, their mix of, like, that 80s synthwave sound with, like, the more uplifting kind of prog metal, and even, like, contemporary gent sounds, uh, they just absolutely did a wonderful job on that record, and it's one of my favorite records of the year. Number four, Glory Hammer, Tales from the Galactic Terror Vortex. What an epic record. I'm not, like, a big power metal guy, and I'm not into, like, fantasy role-playing games, but this is just, like, that kind of album that just makes you feel like you're you're fighting goblins in a dungeon all day, and just, it, it's so epic. It's so brilliantly done. It's cheesy, it's hammed up, but these guys just know how to, like, tug at your heartstrings with just really, like, cheesy stories larger-than-life characters. It's just such a brilliant record. I, I'm so happy that my girlfriend uh, showed this band to me because they are just so brilliant. I'm not huge into power metal, but like these guys do it the way I like it. And uh, check this record out. It's so good. Number three, Thank You Scientist, Terraformer. Another one of those records, it's kind of in the same vein as that Moron Police record where it's very fun, very jovial, uplifting, you know, not not very slow, not very morose kind of record. It's a very, like, happy-go-lucky kind of sound, but uh, what these guys do that Moron Police doesn't is they add that, like, layer of technicality to it that just really kind of pushes it over the top of, like, okay, so they're a good band on that 
front, but they're also like a good fun band. They're, it's like the perfect mix of fun and technical prog rock. Uh, I, I was calling it like Coheed and Cambria if they were still good. Shots fired. But uh, the title track, that guitar solo, like, when Tom Monda is playing that guitar solo, I'm just stank-facing the whole time. Like, it's just so amazing. Uh, it's inspiring me to take an old uh, guitar neck I've got and defret it, because I want to do that. All right, number two, Dream Theater, Distance Over Time. I liked The Astonishing more than a lot of other people did. There were a lot of people who were very unkind to The, uh, to the Astonishing, but, uh, you know, I thought it had some good songs, but I still, like, I listened to Distance Over Time. In fact, I bought it on release day and brought my Discman so that I didn't have to wait to get home to listen to it. And uh, I was blown away by the record. There's a couple songs on it that I, at first I wasn't too hot on, like especially the singles where it was like, okay, it's nothing I haven't heard from Dream Theater since like Train of Thought, but the more I listen to it, the more I'm just like, okay, I can really get into what they're doing here. Um, there isn't a wasted note on this record. Everything is just like straightforward, concise for a Dream Theater record. And they they brought their A-game to the table for this record, and it is just so good how they managed to make this record uh, one of their best in years. I think their best since Portnoy left. And, uh, yeah, some really brilliant songs on this record, some really good proggy moments, uh, and not really anything about this record that I have to complain about. Alright, so finally, we get to my number one record of the year, and that goes to Devin Townsend's Empath. What a ride! I mean, I've always loved Devin Townsend, and he's always brought something special to the table that transcends genre. I mean, yeah, he's great in the prog metal genre, but he's just a great musician all around. I mean, I have friends who don't much care for prog rock and and they hear like Devin Townsend they're blown away um the number of like reaction videos to like his vocal style just blows people away and it's like you can really see that on empath that he's just like putting himself out there as much as he can on that record he poured himself into that record and again is not a wasted note on that record at first, I didn't really care for the track Borderlands, but it grew on me, and now it's one of my favorites. And uh, the 24-minute epic at the end, Singularity, um, and pardon my language, but that track fucked me up. Like, I couldn't believe what I was hearing when, you know, especially when Steve Vai's guitar solo comes in at the end. Like, I damn near broke down during that song. And the rest of it, too. I mean, Hear Me is such a heavy track. Why is so hammed up, but just, like, it just fills you with so much joy. And uh, Spirits Will Collide is, like, the greatest single I've heard all year. Like, I really hope that he plays that song live when I go to see him in February. Like, it's amazing. Genesis is just so all over the place. Every song on this record is just perfect. And this is probably the most perfect record I've heard in a long time. Uh, one of the best Devin Townsend releases in ages, and he's never released a bad album. So, that's saying something. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, watching my top 20 albums of 2019. It's been a really great year for music this year. There's been a lot of really good releases from bands I like, uh, not too many from bands I don't. Uh, there, there was only like one other album that I, I was kind of floating around putting on this list. Uh, so an honorable mention to Dragon Force Extreme Power Metal. That cover of uh, Celine Dion's uh, My Heart Will Go On is just so good. But uh, it didn't make the list. It would have been like number 21. We'll put it that way. And, you know, working for Ultimate Guitar, doing album reviews for them, I've caught so many really good good albums over this year uh from all over different genres um from like bands like alter bridge 
uh, to even like rappers. Like uh, I just recently did the XXX Tenation record for them, and I didn't really care for it overall, but there were still some really good songs on it. So you know, 2019, uh, there's been a lot of really good music this year. Uh, regardless of what genre you're into, what kind of sound you're looking for, it's just been a really good year for music. So, you know, I, I'm happier than I could be about this year, especially after, you know, last year, where there weren't that many really great albums from bands I like, and the ones that did come out from bands I like were either, you know, kind of disappointing or, you know, good, but not on the level of their classics. So, you know, it's really, really good to see a, a good mix of, like, albums that from bands I've just discovered this year, like uh, Glory Hammer, Thank You, Scientist, Moron Police, Sabaton, to, you know, returns to form for bands that I've loved for many years, like Opeth, Korn, Dream Theater, so many just good records. This Top 20 is, you know, by far not the be-all, end-all for music this year. It's just my personal top 20, but uh, you could pick any of these albums, even the ones I was disappointed in. You'll probably find something on them that you enjoy. So anyway, thank you for watching this video, and uh, I really do hope to be putting out some new material on this channel. I kind of miss doing this, and uh, I've got a few creative ideas coming up, so you might want to keep an eye out for that. Anyway, thank you for watching. (laughs) 